Hey guys, this is the Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 7.0, which is a 7-inch tablet which also has phone capabilities. Well, at least this version does. There's a Wi-Fi only version, but the version that I have has 3G and can make phone calls. So let's take a brief look at the device. It's a 7-inch screen, 1024 by 600, and is powered by a 1 gigahertz dual core processor with 1 gig of RAM. So it's not fantastic. And it's actually more of a budget device, and I feel as a budget device, it performs very well and offers a lot of great product features. So let's take a look at the other features of the device. So front-facing VGA camera. On the left-hand side, we have a micro SD card slot as well as a standard mini SIM slot. So you don't have to cut your SIM down like you do have to do for micro SIMs. On the top, we have a standard headset jack as well as a microphone hole port. Um, on, on the right-hand side, we have the power and the volume buttons. And on the bottom, we have the proprietary Samsung dock connector along with some speaker grills. On the back, we have a 3 megapixel fixed focus camera. So that means you will not be able to do macro with this device because it's fixed focus and there's only one focal length it has. So overall, this I feel is a great device. One thing I did note about it is it's a bit wide to hold compared to my previous ZTE V9. It's much, it's wider. In terms of thickness, I think it seems a bit thinner. In terms of height, it's roughly the same, but the ZTE V9 is much easier to hold in hand versus the Galaxy Tab 2 7.0. On the phone calling front, I like the fact that you can actually take phone calls by holding this up to your ear. While it may look funny and silly, it's a great feature because that means you can keep phone calls private as opposed to resorting to a speakerphone capability, which the ZTE V9 had. If you wanted to have a private conversation, you needed to actually use a headset if you had one on you. So that is a great addition to this device. One other thing I like about this device is its ability to support USB on the go. So as you can see here, I've got this USB cable. This is a standard USB drive. And what I can do is connect this to my device. So you can see it's powering up the USB drive. And if all goes well, it should pop up a file explorer to let me copy files. So it's a USB mass storage connected and I can actually copy files to this device straight away, which is fantastic. You can connect my keyboard to it as well, I believe. And I think there are other cables for things like HDMI output, but you, having USB on the go is fantastic. So as I mentioned, it is a budget device being powered by only a one gigahertz processor, dual core processor. But in terms of responsiveness, as you can see, I've got the Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 page loaded. Scrolling is relatively fine. If we talk about rotation, you can see it takes quite a while to kick in. It is a bit slow sometimes. So what it's doing is connecting to the internet, downloading the page. Here we go. So typically fine. It's a bit slow, a bit sluggish. One feature I do like about this device that Samsung has added is this thing called CPU power saving. So as you can see, see here, power saving is off. If I click it, you have the ability to save power on the CPU, on the screen, and as well as the background color. So I typically have all these on, and I turn on power saving, and I can the battery can easily last me, I, think, I guess, one and a half days without issue. So now I have power saving on. Perhaps let's try to go back to the browser. See whether it's a bit slower. I think you can see from there. But yeah, at the end of the day, it is a fantastic device. It's a budget device. It provides a lot of functionality. One thing I don't like about it is the fixed focus camera. So for some people who want to do macro shots, it's not going to be a great device. It's not a high quality camera, it's only 3 megapixels, so the camera quality isn't fantastic, but it lets you get shots done. It's not going to be good for things like if you want to do document scanning or 
taking photos of documents for you to read later. So that might be something that's out of the question if you're looking at this device. You might need something like a magnifying glass to help you there. One thing to note is that this is actually using a tablet UI. Notice how the application drawer comes down from the bottom as opposed to a regular phone which comes down from the top. So that is something that you might have to get used to. A few applications actually work slower on the tablet UI, in particular Gtalk. I find that it's because of the tablet UI where you have fragments on the left on basically, okay, basically fragments are something like this. You have two different sets of data on the left and on the right. You change, click something on the left, you see different sets of screens on the right. So if this were a phone, you would only see the left hand side. You click on it and then you have the right hand side take up the whole screen. Whereas opposed in this tablet UI, you actually see the entire thing. One thing I think Samsung did do right with either TouchWiz or whatever it is, is their screen rotation. So I can disable it when I'm in port, sorry, in landscape mode, and it will stay in landscape mode. That is something I really like. So I can do the same for portrait mode. Turn it on, and now it's stuck in portrait mode. So sometimes it's good for when you're reading, you can keep it this way. Even when you move it on the side, it won't. And that's something I like. Sometimes you're watching a video, you want to keep it staying in landscape mode, and you can do that as well. So I feel that it's perfectly good, perfectly fantastic. Samsung has added a few uh, other additions like this, which is a screenshot button. It is uh, similar to how Ice Cream Sandwich has, I think, power and volume down to take a screenshot. But I have actually disabled that button, I believe. Samsung also has this app drawer thing where you can have overlays on top of your existing application, which I guess is the precursor to their multi-window, multi-windowing thing that they have on the Galaxy Note 2. So it's kind of nice. I don't use it a lot, but it's handy when you do need to use it, especially for things like calculators, alarms, emails, messaging, music player, phone, S Planner, which is the calendar, task manager, and world clock. So overall, this is a fantastic budget device. It provides a lot of features of a phone, of a tablet, of an all-in-one device. Personally, I would use this more if it had three better things. A non-fixed focus camera, one, slightly faster CPU, maybe a bit more RAM too, and a non-proprietary dock connector. While this is Samsung's proprietary dock connector, and you could probably get it in a lot of places because a lot of people use Samsung devices, it is still proprietary and something I don't particularly like, especially if I don't have my cables. If nobody has the cables, what am I going to do? I'm out of luck. So all in all, fantastic device great features, love the phone capability as opposed to speakerphone, love the fact that it's small, carrying, car easy to carry around device, seven inch device, pocketable, and has relatively good battery life as long as the power saving is on. So all in all, I would highly recommend this device if you're looking for a budget tablet device. Who wants to be a phone, wants to be an all-in-one device. So this is a Samsung Galaxy Tab, 2.0 with 3G capabilities. Thanks for watching.